So right now we have a massive amount of deer and elk traffic. Uh, they're coming out because they're getting hungry. So, so you've got a bunch of elk tracks over here by our straw pile and we've got another straw pile right up here that they've really been into as well. We've been seeing a lot of deer poop around, but not as much elk. Um, but we did end up finding some elk poop today, this morning, up right near this main crossway where they seem to go through a lot. So, that's what we're dealing with right now. We set up uh, the solar lamp to try to scare the elk and deer off. And then I put this bucket right here because they were getting in the side. Morning, girls! And um, so they were trying to, uh, last night I caught them trying to get over into the hay where the sheep get right here. So I heard a lot of noise when I was outside at one point and they were digging through the tarp over here. So we're going to have to do something to keep them out of there. I also, see, they went all over this side too. Um, I also caught the elk and the deer um, chomping at the hay over here as well. So, yeah, we're just doing some mitigation. The elk and deer have kind of been all around. So this is the edge of our main pile of hay. Um, initially, we had like probably a half or so of bale of orchard grass right over here that the deer and elk got to before we realized that they were really around. And before I just kind of had the shovel on here and it was fine, but last night I kind of found the shovel on the ground and so I put some stuff on here to try to keep them out because they were really into one of our barrels of alfalfa last night. So this is kind of the way I found it this morning. See, they took a big chunk out of this bale of alfalfa last night at some point in the early morning. So yeah, we're gonna be putting some heavier stuff on here. So I just shoveled a bunch of fresh snow into here. Sheep really haven't been drinking uh, water out of any buckets this winter. They've really just kind of been focused on eating snow. So we just make sure they have a lot of supply of it so that they can get at it when they need to. Lean's really into that right now. Others are kind of just Launching away. They were very vocal this morning. I think they had a lot of visitors last night, so they were a little low on their hay. So they wanted more this morning and they were very clear about it. So this is kind of our feeding area here. We load up the hay over here and sheep kind of have a buffet throughout the day. And we just put more in when they start getting low. Right now we're doing a mix of alfalfa and orchard grass. We've got some pregnant sheep, so they need some of that extra protein. They will eat the orchard grass, but if they have alfalfa, it's a little bit like crack cocaine to them, so they will eat all of that before they'll eat the orchard grass. Even though the orchard grass is a little more balanced for them, they kind of prefer the really good stuff. Yeah, the cats really like hanging out by the sheep enclosure right now. They really like hanging out on top of it. There we go. Hey girls! Hey Pepper! Hey Anna! What are you girls doing? Our little tree climber. She likes hanging out in high places in general. This one likes being up there too. There's uh, pockets of uh, melt-off on top that the cats like to drink out of a lot of the time. Like that. That's your water for the day? We give them water, but sometimes they like to find their own as well. Zana's favorite perch up there. Sometimes she's higher up than that. 
part of the daily routine is to get these guys some minerals and all of that. They really go for that a lot, kind of fight over it, to be honest. They know what's good for them, and they will go for it. <laughs> Pixie, the other one, is typically the one that really gets into this. So if she's around, she will be pushing them all out of the way if she wants in. But she had some more this morning, and she's kind of over there taking care of her regular food needs. Hey, see, that's what happens. That's one, that's one of the issues we've had with the uh, containers and why I'll just hold it here because they get really excited and they'll hoof it <laughs> and then they'll just, good girl, good girl, you knocked it over. I don't have any more in there right now. <laughs> the cats really like hanging out over by our hay stash. They'll just sit on top of it or hang around it. Just chill. There she goes. I put some new stuff on there so she's investigating. She's kind of our calculating cat, I guess you could say. She's a bit of a scaredy cat, actually. She doesn't like new things, and so when we have new animals on the farm or if we or the homestead, and if we get new animals on the homestead, or if we've got new items we've brought in, even in the house or outside, she takes a while to warm up to them. <laughs> Let's go check on Lona right now. Mystery. Deer and elk were actually visiting her because there's some scattered hay and straw that I found this morning. So she had some visitors pretty early on today. Let's see, well, looks like she's got food. I topped off her water this morning. So Lona's doing good. I put the hay back over her. I said the deer have been at it a little bit. This one's really funny, definitely tough, with the wood pile where they've been. So most of the larger birds like to hang out near the house. We actually had a jar of some type of red pepper powder up here. I found it this morning and it was empty. Uh, the deer actually had pulled it down from the top of our coop last night, eaten the paper off of it, and somehow managed to remove the lid off of it, and kind of came up here to a little bit of a crime scene this morning with red pepper powder everywhere. After some issues we've had with predators, it was a little bit of a concern that someone had gotten into the, the coop last night, but it was just the powder that the deer, or elk, whoever got into it had managed to spread around. Probably got a huge whiff of it when they opened it up. The chickens have had their feed for the morning, so this is kind of the leftovers of what they haven't gotten at. Whatever right now the chickens aren't eating, the deer will get in the evening or overnight. Um, the chickens that like hanging out closer to the coop will hang out underneath most of the, the day, and then they'll go back inside. Sometimes they'll be up on, on top if the door accidentally gets shut or something, but in general, these girls like to hang out close to home. Looks like everyone's out for the day. We've got to do some coop clean out in the next day or so. We have a bunch more tracks right close to our little house right now. They've kind of been skirting right around the edge of it in the last few days. So they've just kind of been enclosing their perimeter at this point. See, everyone's 
was just hanging out, chilling under there. Once in a while, we'll have our loner chicken join the, under the house or come down before everyone else does. Pepper has gotten like super daring. He's climbing up there and hanging out at the top of the sheep enclosure. Yeah, she warming up to them a lot. I think they like the view up there. Sheep are just chilling right now. When we're not watching them or out there with them, they'll just run circles and chase each other a lot. So it's kind of amusing to watch from inside some of the time. So now what I'm doing here is using my graph drawing that I had previously done when I converted my pencil sketch over into a graph. And I'm bringing it up and putting it onto the canvas itself. So this is a very common technique that people use when they're creating a composition. The goal of this is to easily enlarge the smaller drawing, which is nearly always more accurate. Here I've got my little Washington Monument going in. One goal that I would like to accomplish when I'm building my, op my permanent office and the off-grid homestead up here is to have a very oversized table for drafting in perspectives. One thing I want to do is try and have a workspace which has a table that's at least seven or eight feet long. That seems like a long ways to go if I'm gonna be working at the scale of a few feet, but that allows me to have extended straight edges that go enormous distances for much better perspective. Some of the next steps I'm gonna start taking is laying down another coat of gesso over top of these pencils. Now I'll be able to see the pencils from underneath, but it'll start filling in even a little bit more and giving me a little bit wider of a tone. Uh, we've really taken out a lot of the canvas tone already. And then I'm going to start laying down colors for the sky and beginning to get specific about the crowd. Um, I believe if I follow my plan that I have right now, much of the central focus area will be completed uh, in the first half of this production and the f rest of the production will radiate out from there with concurrent layers building on top as we move out. So I hope that you will subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Help us out. Em and I are really putting everything we've got on the line here and um, we love it. Uh, we, we just want to keep building great conservative values content for our viewers to enjoy and create some good original art to both help sustain us and uh, to take care of our animals, feed our, ourselves and our animals, and be of value in the world. Please remember to hit the like and subscribe button below. Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.